Planet Earth is wrapped in a kind of cosmic electric blanket surrounded by solar flares, 10 times more powerful than anything we've seen in years. The flares bombard the Earth's magnetic field. In fact, some airplanes had to make detours in order to steer clear. And the nation's top scientists are monitoring the power grids. ABC's Sam Champion has been tracking this all day and tells us what those scientists are seeing so far. These are the eruptions on the surface of the sun. Solar flares more than 500,000 miles high and 10 million times more powerful than a volcanic eruption that sent today's solar storm barreling down to Earth, setting off a white-knuckle watch for trouble. Inside the nation's mission control for space weather, all eyes were tracking the storm around the clock, looking for impact and watching closely for any new flare-ups on the very active surface of the sun. And this region really hasn't shown any signs of, of decay or, or diminishing, so the, the threat is still there. Just the threat is bad news for airlines, power utilities, GPS providers, all who spent the day on the lookout for any disruptions, since the storms are powerful enough to knock out modern communications. Both Delta and American Airlines rerouted several flights just out of precaution. Fortunately, the worst did not occur. Predictions of a powerful storm eased for now. We don't feel the direct effect of these solar flares because the magnetic particles of the sun are invisible. But don't be fooled because during these solar storms, those particles are raining down over all of us at a speed of about 4 million miles an hour on a very long trip, 93 million miles from the sun to the earth. Solar storms can be serious. Some examples, fall 2003. There were blackouts in Europe. Astronauts on the International Space Station had to take cover. In 1989, six million people lost power in Quebec, leaving the entire province in the dark. Along with all the threats, there is one beautiful plus. Americans will be able to see a dazzling display of northern lights as far south as Michigan and Maine. And it seems we should get used to hearing about these solar storm warnings because the sun has an 11-year kind of cycle. And, Diane, it seems like we're in the peak of that active cycle. So this one's over tomorrow morning. Can you predict the next one? Well, it seems a little trickier to predict them than predicting the weather because in order to, in their release today, they said the scientists knew that the sun was going to throw a ball at us, make a pitch to the earth, but they thought it was going to be a hard fastball and it ended up being kind of a soft curveball. <laughs> so that just lets me know they're not as good at it as we would like them to be. Yeah, somebody said it it was like shaking up the atmosphere a little bit like a snow globe yeah. on the earth. Okay, thank you, Sam.